Here and there, scattered everywhere. I was shocked that this is legal. Hundreds of liens attached to homes owned by patients. I got taken advantage of. Patients who did everything right. It affects your whole life, it affects your credit, it affects everything. Nine Wants to Know spent a year examining thousands of property records, going to hospitals, neighborhoods, and courtrooms. I cannot talk to you about any cases I am involved in. In the middle of a national conversation on surprise medical bills. Now as our Denver affiliate KUSA first uncovered. Our investigation discovered few of us are immune. Chris, I'm glad you're doing this story because you're giving me a voice. Have we made some people uncomfortable? Yeah. Is that okay? I think you've made the right people uncomfortable. I'm looking for Dr. McGuire. What we found... Liens. Liens being put on people's homes because of a bill they didn't even know they owed. What we found focused a new round of debate in Colorado. I'd like to thank Nine News and especially Chris Vanderveen for highlighting this issue over the past year. But would a year's worth of coverage be enough? We only needed one. Enough to overcome years and years of lobbyists and cash and blame. The insurance companies pointing here, the hospitals pointing here, the docs pointing here, and I'm just tired of it. Nine Wants to Know presents Lean on Me. You don't ask, you know, as you're being wheeled into the operating room. Oh, are you in my network for my health insurance? If you have insurance, you too are vulnerable. I was actually relieved to hear that I wasn't the only one that this has been happening to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Folks, this is a big issue. This is a big problem. Stories like these don't begin here, but sometimes... I can't do that. I tried. They do end right here on this floor. Finger pointing happens constantly, and that's what I've been in the middle of. Representative Denea Esker has found herself in a fight. Does this get you to a yes? A fight she pledged to lead last fall when we asked her about the findings of our investigation. When you told me about the liens that are being placed on people's homes, I was heartbroken. I, I can't believe that it's gotten to that point. House Bill 1174 represents the fifth piece of legislation in five years written to help protect Colorado patients from so-called surprise medical bills. Thousands of dollars that they didn't think they owed. This is the farthest any of those five bills has made it. And yet... I'm going to stall for a minute. Can I stall for a minute? 1174 is stumbling during its House debate debut. We're working on an amendment. We will take a short recess. A sign that a fix to this problem will not come as easy as Esker might like. The opposition lobbied up even heavier, and tried their best to stop this bill. And to think, it all started one year prior with a phone call, a tip. But there's nothing I can do. A tip about a home, that home down there. I got taken advantage of. The home owned by Nicole and Jeff Briggs. There's a right and a wrong, yeah. and uh, this is definitely the wrong. A few years ago, Nicole went here, Swedish Medical Center for a suspected appendicitis. Told them I was coming, verified they took my insurance. A few years later, the appendectomy resulted in a lien on their home. We had no idea we were being completely blindsided by all this. Think of a lien like a legal claim to a property that forces the owner to pay off a debt before selling or refinancing. It's an aggressive move used to get people to pay delinquent taxes, child support, or in this case, a $4,700 medical bill, not from the hospital, but from the surgeon. The hospital took my insurance, but the doctor did not. Not that they knew that. No one here bothered to tell them, hey, you know that on-call surgeon working that night? Nope, doesn't take your insurance. He's out of network. Oh, and by the way, when he does charge you, he's going to demand. He just sent us to collections. Yeah. That was it. Demand, thanks to this lien, an amount five times what Medicare would pay. So now we have to pay off somehow this debt to figure this out. And we found more. They put a lien on your home. Yep. A lot more. You followed the rules. I did. And you still... Still ended up in court, still ended up in collections, still ended up with a lien on my house. Liens sometimes placed so quietly, not even the owner knew it was there. What did you think when I told you there was a lien on your place? I said, wow, I had no idea. Each placed to try to settle four-figure debts owed to surgeons who performed unplanned surgeries. Uh, appendicitis found out in otherwise in-network hospitals. The surgeon was billing out of network, yeah. The doctor that performed the surgery was out of network. More than a dozen surgeons working in at least eight Colorado hospitals, all tied to one collections company, 
Colorado Springs-based Credit Systems, Inc. We searched metro area county records and found more than 208 liens placed by Credit Systems since the start of 2017, like the one. I had a lap coli. Uh, my gallbladder removed. The one placed on Melody Montano's home. You don't ask, you know, as you're being wheeled into the operating room, oh, are you in my network for my health insurance? As was the case with the others, her surgeon was out of network. Her insurance company paid him this much and then told her she'd have to pay this much. And then told the surgeon right there, Melody should not be liable for additional charges. Didn't stop the doctor from sending her a bill for the rest. I work. I'm a single mother. I have you know, mortgage, so, yeah. Unable to collect on the debt, it's hard. Credit Systems put a lien on her home. You had to come up with a way to pay this off mm -hmm. on your own. Sorry. You, no, it's okay. Yep. It affected a lot. A national database of insurance claims, Fair Health, says the average in-network payment for a gallbladder removal in Colorado, $1,233. The average out-of-network payment for the surgery, $2,600. Her surgeon wanted her and her insurance company to pay more than double that. It affects your whole life. It affects your credit. It affects everything. And even though the debt is now paid in full, Credit Systems has yet to pull the lien. Why? We can't say. Hi, Ruth. Uh, this is Chris Vanderveen. The company has yet to respond to any of my inquiries. As for Nicole, the lien on her and her husband's home is now older than their firstborn child. They'd love to move, but can't until the lien is paid in full. You're just like, well, I'm here to tell you that I feel like I don't owe it. And they're like, no, 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 you owe it. How are you going to pay that? That's yeah. it. That's it. That's all there is to it. We wanted to know what Nicole's surgeon, Dr. Emmett McGuire, thought of the lien on the home of his former patient. So we stopped by his office. I'm looking for Dr. McGuire. Um, they are in meetings all day. Okay. Can I give a message for him? Sure. Nothing. Texted him. Nothing. No response. And finally, when I did reach him on a cell one day, Dr. McGuire, he wanted nothing to do with me, even threatened to block my number, something Nicole might now like to do to his collections company. Over the summer, it started garnishing her wages. After court fees and interest, she now owes even more for a surgery done by a surgeon she never knew, never chose. I hope you're happy. Like, I hope you had something great you could spend this $6,000 on. You know, I mean, because it's ruined our lives. Ruined, all thanks to a system that sounds like it belongs in a state like Nevada. Consider it a curious game of odds, numbers, and chance. Visit a hospital these days, and you too might find yourself playing. Here's how. Say you're insured, and the hospital is in network with your health insurance. You're good, right? Not necessarily. What about the ER doctor? Going to have to or that surgical assistant? Or that surgeon who's about to extract Here we go. your badly infected appendix? Months later, you might learn that surgeon was not in network. Now wants thousands, thousands your insurance never paid. Turns out not all people who work in hospitals work for hospitals. Some are essentially subcontractors, free to take whatever insurance they choose. Some choose not to accept any insurance and are thus free to demand whatever they believe they're worth. Some seek less while others want more. Sometimes, a lot. Sometimes your insurance will pay all of it, sometimes some of it, and sometimes none of it, leaving you to pay the rest. Here's why this matters. This year, the federal government concluded four out of 10 of all Americans could not afford to immediately pay off an unexpected $400 bill. Surprise bills we've seen from out-of-network surgeons, for example, often run at least 10 times that. And people who won't can't pay find themselves facing collectors willing to sue, garnish wages, and place liens on homes to ensure payments. Game, indeed, turning any unexpected hospital visit into the equivalent of a trip to a casino on the Vegas Strip. So if the problem is so obvious, why hasn't it been fixed? Turns out plenty of people have an interest in maintaining the status quo. 
Welcome everyone. Today's Wednesday, April 18th. Around here. We only have one bill on our agenda for today. You might consider necessity the mother of dissension. But this bill is not the answer. For years, Colorado patients have told legislators of the need. It must have been a mistake. The need for more protection from surprise medical bills. In December, I received a notice from a collections company. Since 2015, not once. That motion fails 4-5. Not once has any surprise billing legislation made it out of committee. No, that fails 3-2. to two. This bill isn't necessary right now. Fails on a vote of 3-2. to two. And on to the Senate floor. A failure that continues to result in consequences for people like... I'm actually studying to be a nurse. Like nursing school student Emmy Kame. I'm not sure. I have a feeling of uncertainty right now. That's really not a good place to be. When we met her inside the Adams County Courthouse, she owed more than $10,000 to Dr. Emmett McGuire. The surgeon that performed the surgery was out of network. Out of network, working inside North Suburban Medical Center, a hospital she chose because it was in network with her insurance. When she couldn't afford to pay Dr. McGuire, his collections company sued her before offering her in the courtroom's hallway a deal she had no choice but to refuse. They wanted $500 a month in payment. Or more than her part-time job pays. There's no way I can pay $500 a month right now. The attorney suing her is Ruth Sharp. She works for a collections company known as Credit Systems, Inc., a company with an eagle grasping cash on its website. When people don't pay, Sharp has placed liens on homes, more than a couple hundred since the start of last year. We spent months trying to ask her questions. Can I ask you just about some balanced billing laws in the state of Colorado? I cannot talk to you about any cases I am involved in. I'm not asking you about cases. I'm asking about the balanced billing law in the state of Colorado. When we found her in the courthouse, we tried to ask a few more. Are you familiar with the law? Ruth, are you familiar with the law? I'm not talking to you. Why are you not talking to us? Ruth, why can't you talk to us? So she wouldn't say why she sues on behalf of so many surgeons. But we know this, in the state of Colorado, the law lets her do this. She could sue you for thousands, put a lien on your home, all for a surgery done inside a hospital you chose. A surgery done by a surgeon who you had no way of knowing didn't take your insurance. But consumers are the ones that are really hurt by this. Republican State Senator Bob Gardner has twice co-sponsored legislation to protect patients from so-called surprise bills. Consumers are often caught in the middle. Senator Hill? No. Senator Jones? Yes. Last session, his most recent bill died on a three to two vote in committee. No, that's Why? Three to two. He replied by offering a who. If the Colorado Medical Society supports the legislation that you had last year, does it get passed through the, through the committee? I think that's likely. Yes, the Colorado Medical Society, or CMS, the state's largest organization of doctors, some of whom continue to aggressively go after out-of-network bills. Gardner's Democratic co-sponsor was even more blunt about CMS's role. Who killed your bill last year? CMS. Representative Denea Esker says the problem remains a problem because those in power like where they are. If you start to shake anything up too much and you threaten that profitability one way or another, a lot of people stand up and say no way. During the 2018 session, CMS spent $200,000 lobbying Colorado legislators. It's contributed 80 grand to the re-election campaigns of the 14 senators who have killed surprise billing legislation. It has a strong voice around here a stronger one than their patients, says Esker. They have more money to pay more people to be here to talk to more legislators. And they like talking to legislators. Absolutely. Why is nothing happening? I think nothing is happening because of the politics involved. CMS attorney John Conklin insists CMS wants a solution here, just not the solution suggested in previous years. I'd say that the bill was introduced very late in the session, and it didn't accomplish what the Medical Society would like to see accomplished on this issue. When asked what CMS would support, he said legislation that keeps patients away from surprise bills by forcing insurance companies to pay surgeons directly something insurance companies will likely fight because they'll likely have to pay more. Yes. And that is something Kame knows all too well herself. She offered Sharp 100 a month, all she could afford, she said. Sharp said no. And she said that would take 12 years. And there was no, like, I guess I was too long for them. <laughs> She now faces what others in Colorado have faced for years, wage garnishments, maybe even a lien on her home. 
are those people just out of luck because the legislature and the medical society and insurance companies can't figure this out? They're just out of luck? Those people are caught in a complex, very unfortunate situation. Should doctors be putting liens on homes? The doctors are utilizing the current system uh, that we have. So who lets this happen? I mean, doctors don't just get to do surgeries wherever they want, right? He came to Swedish Medical Center hoping, expecting to get better. Pretty much knew right away what it was, appendicitis. He laughed, never envisioning. Yeah, I assumed it was some kind of mistake. The visit would result in a lien on his Littleton home. You have insurance, you have an emergency, it should be taken care of. Emmett Malone's insurance covered the hospital bill, but no one told him the on-call surgeon had no contract with his insurance. And so when Malone's insurance decided to pay her a fraction of the total bill, the surgeon's billing company billed Malone for the balance. I honestly didn't know that was even possible. And when Malone refused to pay nearly four grand, a collections company sued him and eventually placed this lien on his home. Apparently that's what they're allowed to do, which is crazy. Why would a surgeon working in their hospital not accept the same insurance plans they accept? We asked Swedish. They refused to say on camera. We did manage to ask the same question of the Colorado Hospital Association. Unequivocally, hospitals want to find a solution to this problem. Catherine Mulready says most hospitals don't employ most of the doctors who work within their walls. They work independently and thus are free to accept or not accept whatever insurance they choose. An issue, she says, leaves even the hospitals unaware of who is in network and who is not. I don't know that we have any um, ability to track that kind of thing. It, certainly not the ability to track it in any sort of real time. Um, so we don't know actually how big that problem might be. Should you try to figure it out? It's not information that we have access to. What we did have access to is this. At Swedish, five of the seven doctors who work inside this emergency general surgery and trauma department have used the same collections company that's placed liens on a lot of homes. By nine wants to nose count more than 208 homes since the start of 2017, including the lien on the home of Emmett Malone. I was actually relieved that, to hear that I wasn't the only one that this has been happening to. To make matters more perplexing, Swedish is owned by Health One, and Health One has a company policy to not place liens on property or garnish wages for payment. So to review, the same hospital that says it's not gonna put a lien on your home to get you to pay a bill, seemingly has no problem giving privileges to a physician that will use a collections company that's gonna do just that. Got it. Should we not require hospitals to say, if you're going to work in our hospital, you have to agree to take our in-network rights. State Senator Bob Gardner is contemplating authoring a law for the next legislative session that would do that. And it's not just Swedish. We found surgeons billing out of network at other Health One hospitals, as well as Centura hospitals. Our lien list includes bills from at least eight metro hospitals. Don't you owe that to your patients? to know more about what's taking place within your wall? There's just too many variables, and hospitals don't have insight into that any better than the patient does. Curious to know if even the surgeon who worked on Malone's appendix was aware of what her collections team was doing, I called her. He had reached the Office of the Emergency General Surgery and Trauma Doctors of Swedish Hospital. She, like almost every doctor I've called about this subject for months, never called me back. As for Malone, not long after we informed the state's division of insurance, the state informed him in this letter that he no longer owed the four-figure bill. His insurance would reprocess the claim and pay the full amount. This shouldn't be this hard. No, the whole system is, it's crazy. And it's not just Emmett and Melody and Nicole. Four-figure bill. After we aired our first story in November. It's all part of a nine months to know investigation called Lean On Me. We heard from people like Evelyn, Daryl, Amy and Greg, Peggy, Pat, Julie, Teresa, Tanya, Jane, Liz, Brenda, Shelley, Lisa and Marty, Ashley and Scott. Hardly a surprise, considering last year this study out of the University of Chicago concluded 57% of adults have found themselves surprised by a medical bill they thought their insurance would have covered. Our stories also prompted one of the state's largest surgical groups, Colorado Surgical and Critical Care Associates, to commit to never proceed with in-court pursuit of our patients' debts that might result in a judgment against them. 
No more liens. No more wage garnishments, as they are simply inconsistent with our mission. It seemed nearly everyone agreed something was indeed wrong. Yet year after year after year, nothing changed here. 1174, Escar and Catlin. I'll this year finally be the year. House Bill 1174 is assigned to the Committee on Health and Insurance. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Pardon the patrons of the Capitol's basement committee hearing rooms. Come on up. For feeling a hint. I ask that you vote yes in favor. And I urge your approval of it. Of deja vu. And if he did not pay, they would send the balance to collections. For the fifth time in as many years. This is a good bill. Vote yes. A Colorado Legislative Committee considered taking the surprise out of surprise medical bills. This is absurd, and in no other industry would we tolerate this type of practice. Like years past, this year's version brought out the doctors. This bill, um, as it's written, puts physicians at a substantial disadvantage. Who brought out their concerns about what this might do to their overall compensation. We regretfully oppose at this moment. Here's where a quick animation might help. Under the terms of House Bill 1174, out-of-network doctors could not send bills to patients who visit otherwise in-network facilities. Instead, those doctors would have to fight it out directly with the patient's insurance company. By keeping the patients out of the fight, it would eliminate the possibility of liens on patients' homes for unpaid surprise medical bills. I would like to thank Nine News and especially Chris Vanderveen for highlighting this issue over the past year. Not once had similar legislation made it out of committee. Not once until... Ms. Wallace, please take the roll. This yes. bipartisan and yes. unanimous... And your bill passes 9 to 0. ...vote. A vote Representative Denea Esker compared to an engagement. They tell you don't marry your bills, and I'm usually pretty good about that. But with this one, I, I'll wholeheartedly admit I have married this bill. It was not love at first sight for all of her colleagues, however. Thank you, Madam Chair. Which brings us back to where this all began. I'm going to stall for a minute. Can I stall for a minute? We will take a short recess. At five foot no inches, Representative Esker fears floor negotiations with no one. Does this get you to a yes? On this day, she sparred with Senate Minority Leader Patrick Neville. Are you just taking it out? Republicans like Neville were worried. Doctors had told them to kill Esker's bill. Esker needed their support to gain momentum. Okay. Let's just leave it then. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Fail here and her bill would die. So... She offered an amendment. We just needed to clarify um, some technical things. An amendment to offer limited arbitration to doctors unhappy with insurance payments. In the end... All those in favor say aye. Aye. It worked. The following day, 1174 made it out of the House on a bipartisan 60 to 4 vote. Two weeks later, the Colorado chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians sent out this email obtained by Nine Wants to Know, urging an all-out fight against 1174 in the Colorado Senate. If the bill passes in its current form, we fear that it will have significant negative repercussions. It didn't work. It's, it's been three years of heartache. Nicole Briggs, the very first person we interviewed, made sure of that. They put a lien on my home, they garnished my wages. It's as close to redemption as I'm going to get. That was Bill 1174 by Representative Escar and Catlin, Senators Gardner and Pedersen concerning out-of-network health care services provided to covered persons in connection with making an appropriation. I'm watching the clock um, as we're in the final days of session. Of 31 ayes, 4 no votes, 0 absent, and 0 excuse, House Bill 1174 has passed. Will the sergeants please close and lock the doors? With 54 aye votes and 9 no votes and 2 excused, House Bill 1174 is repassed as amended. In the end, people listened, people understood, and I truly believe it was the stories, the real stories from people across Colorado that influenced legislators to make sure they made the right decision. Hi! Thanks for coming. We're going to make sure that this practice of billing people out of network without them even knowing it is put to an end. Here, there, everywhere. And some people were getting liens put on their houses. Hundreds of liens attached to hundreds of patients. It's now the law of Colorado. Patients who did absolutely nothing wrong. You of all people know how many people have been impacted by these out-of-network bills. Honestly, like, the attention that you have brought to this issue, I truly believed helped push us over the line. We're determined to end surprise medical billing for American patients.